In Wyoming, Pennsylvania, sits the Berkshire Mall, an interesting specimen of old world architecture. Why don't we get a closer look at it while we still can? Might even feel like a time warp. Berkshire Mall's plans can be traced back to the 1960s. With Sears committing to the major department store of the mall, construction would officially kick off in November 1968. After over a year of construction, the official opening would be held in February 1970. Berkshire Mall would mark local history as the first Eastern State Mall to open away from the Philadelphia metropolitan area. Original anchors would include the previously mentioned Sears, Wanamakers, and Lit Brothers, which turned over to Pomeroy's early on. The Goodman Company, the original developers of the mall, would sell them all off in 1985 to equitable real estate management. And by now, the mall would experience some minor updates. Fountains in the center court of the mall would be removed, and a second level food court would be established in December 1989, known as the Terrace Cafe. Before then, the space was referred to as Lamppost Lane, which was host to a modest setup of a restaurant, uniform shop, and a craft shop. Pomeroy's would turn over to Bonton, gradually as the two nameplates shared space at various stores, before Bonton would take over altogether in 1990. Meanwhile, Wanamakers would turn over to Hecht's in 1995, before becoming a Strawbridge and Clothier in 1996, before finally closing in the early 2000s. Fortunately, Berkshire Mall would receive its greatest asset by 2002. Boscovs. That same year, Berkshire Mall would be sold to Allied Properties, whom would own the mall all the way up to 2020. Berkshire Mall was home to I guess you could call it a series of unfortunate events over the 2000s and 2010s. In November 2009, a fire had broken out in a display window for Victoria's Secret. Fortunately, emergency sprinklers ensured that only the store in the adjacent hallway would suffer smoke and water damage. In April 2010, a fire had broken out in Boscovs and this resulted in serious injury for a worker caught in the blaze. The fire was controlled before it could spread, and the worker was airlifted to hospital for treatment. Continuing with these events, January 2011 would see a mall patron who was not paying any attention and they had bumped into the fountain and fell over into it. 
A security guard who witnessed the ordeal on security cameras ripped the footage and threw it up on YouTube days later. After it had gone viral and received international attention, the security guard responsible for the incident was tracked down and swiftly fired from their job. And finally, in 2014, an early spring storm had brought forward hail which rained down upon the mall. These golf ball sized ice balls would have penetrated the ceiling and skylights. Multiple cars were damaged by the incident and the Sears court suffered the most as broken glass and hailstones rained down into the mall concourse, plants, and fountain. A lifetime ago, you would have seen this fountain and bridge set up in multiple malls spanning over at least three states. Today, this is one of the last of its kind. The only other fountain plus bridge combo that I know of is in Indianapolis. Savor the moment, for we may never see it again. August 2018 would see Bonton close its doors for the final time as the company went under due to bankruptcy. That same year in November, Sears followed suit. This would leave only Boscovs to serve as the only traditional anchor. However, a number of junior anchors and big name stores would remain, keeping this mall viable as a destination, for now at least. Even 2020 has failed to stop this mall. However, the biggest challenge will lay in the current owners, Namdar Realty. This is still a rather strong mall, and only Namdar can decide whether or not that will continue to be so. Would you believe me if I said I never heard of this mall until 2018, and that I never visited until 2019 when I collected this footage? I have to ask myself, why isn't this mall better known among the mall enthusiast community? I mean, right now, unless renovations are underway, most of this is still intact as of the making of this video. Now, granted, last I heard, the fountain by Sears is now dry and the bridge has been roped off for safety reasons. Safety with like 15 quotation marks. However, that said, you still have everything you see in the video here. The fountains, the tiles and seating area, the doom style hexagon floor, the food court neon that looks like cleverly set bug zappers, the elevator, the customer service desk, even the color scheme of those things. This place is freaking awesome. And if you can't tell, I like it a lot. Now, of course, with only one anchor, there's no telling which stores are still here or not. But nonetheless, I would certainly encourage a visit to this mall. This should be on everyone's list to visit. It's lively, both in terms of population and aesthetics. Even the outside looks pretty good. I wish I could say more about the mall, but we are already through to the end. What did you think about this mall? Don't you want to come see it for yourself now? Nonetheless, thanks for having me while missing. And until next time, this is Doomy Grunt, wishing you and the Berkshire Mall farewell and good luck in the future.
Oh, was I supposed to pronounce it as Berkshire? Oops.